Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's having a very nice day. And it's raining here. Yuck. But oh well, it is what it is. I have my door open though, because it's it's not really warm, but it's just at that, that temperature that it can get stuffy in your house if you don't at least have some air circulating. But as you can see, I am making dinner for my husband and it's kind of going to be a hodgepodge. That's the only thing I could come up with as, as I was you know, getting things out of the refrigerator, I thought this is just going to be a hodgepodge of food because there was just a lot of things that I needed to use up. I had a green pepper, I had some um, celery, I had a half an onion, I had some jalapeno peppers. What else did I have? I had a half of red uh, pepper and thought I'd open up a can of those mushrooms that I got so inexpensively and in the pan there, I just have a couple of very small um, pork loins cooking up. So that's what he is going to be having. I'm just going to stick it all together so I didn't have to throw anything out. That way it got used up before it got too old. But I did want to take a moment and apologize for yesterday. I had um, got received a phone call the day before yesterday from my daughter-in-law, as you know, who has MS. And she didn't want to go to Cleveland all by herself to her appointment. So she had called me up and said, is there any way you can go with me? And of course I'm going to go with you. You know, I'm not going to have to go two hours to a big city all by yourself. So um, I went with her and we had a wonderful time. And I did get to video one of the places that we went into. And uh, unfortunately, though, my GoPro died. I mean, the battery died. And so I only have some of that. I, we went back there after her appointment because we wanted to buy some of the um, ground lamb and I wanted to get some of the ground turkey. But uh, my GoPro wasn't working. And then on top of that, once I got home, I couldn't, for some reason, if it's a totally dead battery, even though it's plugged into my computer, wired into my computer, it still would not import those pictures. It said, low battery. So it took a little bit of time for that to charge up. At least I thought it was going to take a little bit of time. And when I went to check, it wasn't working at all. I mean, it wasn't charging. I was like, what is going on here? So it took me it took me like 10 or 15 minutes to figure it out, but by then I just needed to finish up my own video and so I didn't get to include any of that footage. I will include that today. But on top of that, after I got all of my video done for yesterday and I went to upload it to YouTube, I couldn't find it. I mean, I looked everywhere in my computer. I looked in my documents, I looked at my videos, I looked at throughout my pictures. I'm like, where did this go? And I even did a search. Nothing. It said, no such item. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. It's here. I just finished it 20 minutes ago. I totally finished it and saved it. Where did it go? And I couldn't find it. So probably around 8.30 last night, I was on my computer and I thought, the thought popped in my head and I believe it was the Lord helping me check in your recycling bin. And sure enough, that's where it was. So of course I was able to restore it and I thought, how in the world did it get there? But see, I had gone through some old video and I had deleted it. So I'm thinking that somehow I clicked on the wrong thing and I did it myself because it's just not gonna magically happen that way. But, so like it got uploaded really late. I mean, it was probably like 11.30 last night because it takes me about two hours to upload from my home to YouTube. 
um, just because we just don't have a very fast internet speed. So yeah, it was late and that's why it got up so late. But I will show you the maybe about a minute or so footage of that. I don't even, I think it was just called the, I don't, I'm not even sure, but you know what? I do know that in the video, I asked my daughter-in-law, Kelly, I said, what is this, what's the name of this place? So yeah, I mustn't have been paying attention because I did ask, but it was fantastic. It looked like it was in an old train station and it was just an unbelievable place really unbelievable we both agreed we need to go back here we need to bring a cooler with lots of of ices and we need to just be able to stock our freezers because that's how inexpensive and the different varieties of meats that you don't you don't see in your grocery stores anyways i'm gonna finish up my husband's dinner and i'll talk to you after a little bit oh my goodness oh my look at that God. Oh, look at those lemon squares. What is the name of this place? The Market. The Market. Look at those lady locks. Wow. That doesn't, that doesn't even sound good to me. Mayo bacon apple fritters does not sound good at all. Wow. This is a necessarily for Christmas stuff. But yeah. Oh, I can't even say that out loud. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Rice starch? High gluten flour? Now who'd want that? Maybe it's just the one. Wheat gluten? Look at all these meats. How much is theirs? More money. It was six seventy nine at the other one. Mm -hmm. They have rabbit over there. Oh, that's disgusting. Okay. This is hilarious. Yeah. We should be able to go down. Oh, okay. And I wasn't. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's yeah, extra virgin. Is this it says this is blood orange, basil, garlic, Meyer lemon, roasted chili. Wow, very neat. Hello, everyone. I hope everybody's having a lovely day. And actually, I had to turn on every light in this room. It just was so dreary and dark uh, even though it doesn't look like it from the window it just doesn't seem to be any of the light outside which it's totally cloudy and rainy just doesn't seem to be coming in the house it's just really you need a you need the lights on to see anything but anyways we are going to be continuing in philippians chapter 4 and we will be reading the final verses verses 20 to 23 and here in this final passage of Philippians, we see Paul bring to conclusion the common threads of his letter. And I encourage you to allow the words spoken to lift your soul, for they are indeed full of grace and glory. Now to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you. 
but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Paul ends his letter with an explanation of praise. And notice he uses the word our, which is a possessive pronoun that demonstrates ownership. Now to our God and Father. That's beautiful. Do you remember how Paul pointed out that all the awful things that was happening to him had turned out for good and for the furtherance of the gospel? He had mentioned that the palace guard knew of his faith in Christ Jesus. And now what appears to have happened as verse 22 here in chapter 4 suggests is that all of Caesar's household has now placed their belief and faith in Christ Jesus. I read once where someone noted the following. The crucified Galilean carpenter had already begun to rule those who ruled the greatest empire of the world. Oh, the great grace of our great God. The Christian life, which is an expression of grace, is by grace sustained. The final verse pretty much sums up all of Paul's yearnings for the Christians in Philippi. Just compare verse 2 of chapter 1 and verse 23 here in chapter 4 of the last chapter. Verse 2 of chapter 1 says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now here in chapter 4, verse 23, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Above all else, Paul wanted his friends in the Philippian church to experience God's peace. Peace amongst themselves, peace of heart, peace of mind, and peace in relation to earthly things and circumstances. As our hearts and souls resonate with Paul's blessing, it would be good to remember the following three things. First, Paul's words bless us, and they should help remind us of the power of our own words. Whether they're spoken or written, they are to bring grace to those we are addressing. That our tongue, that our pen, which would also include our typing when we are on social media, that possesses the power to encourage, to calm, to fortify, and to soothe the minds and souls of others. Each of us have experienced the hurtful and harsh words from others, both in person and with comments made to us across the many social medias on the internet. Let's make sure that we, like Paul, are God's messengers of grace, regardless of what someone else might be saying. And second, Paul reached those around him with the good news of Jesus Christ. His constant companions were the soldiers of the imperial, imperial guard of Rome. Yes, Paul was chained to them, but in turn, they were chained to him. And Paul took advantage of the opportunities to share about Jesus Christ. And we must also be aware of every opportunity to tell others that we are around even the unlikely ones, because it's important that we do not preach to people 
but our words about Jesus Christ will bring grace to those that we are around also, just like Paul's. And third, Paul never lost sight of the fact that our entire salvation from start to finish depends on God's sovereign favor in Jesus Christ. For he is worthy of our praise and he is worthy to be talked about and he is worthy of our worship and he is worthy of all the glory forever and forever. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. Let's use our words to encourage and not tear down. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. Good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow.